Welcome back to the show that you know, the one where we sit and we talk about music. Hey, hey, everybody's here, they've come to watch the show, now here we go. Have a theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> See what's a theme tune, it's just a bit much. Well, maybe we need a new theme tune. But you made that first one. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't say it was good, did I? Why do you think we've only stayed at 30 subscribers? Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back anyway to people in the future when you watch this. If you're watching this now, it means that we're probably dead. Just leave that in there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an interesting topic of conversation, bringing us to today's album. It's one of your favourites. It is. Just like one of our classic favourites. And well, well, it is one of our classic favourites. One of yours. Don't. Not ours. One of us is classic favourites. One of us possessive. <laughs> classic favourites. One favorites. of yours. And this week we have American Idiot by Green Day. Just before we get into the video, I'm intrigued because you said that we'd do this video. Yes. Because people have heard about it. But there's yes. other pop punk albums that you like better than this. Yeah. But people might not have heard of them. Well, it's not that people wouldn't have heard of them. It's just that this is probably the biggest pop punk album that there has been. Mm. By one of... By the biggest pop punk band, I guess. I was going to ask you what those albums might have been. I think overall, I personally prefer Bowling for Soup over Green Day. They're just a bit more silly and don't take themselves very seriously. They've got some serious songs and then plenty of... Like, they've got a song called My Wiener. Mm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I personally prefer that more silly, silly side of things in pop punk. Otherwise, I do like Blink, but I probably would say that I prefer Green Day over Blink. Probably, I, when, when I was thinking that in mind, I was just thinking, what's my favourite pop punk album? And probably, off the top of my head, The Great Burrito Extortion Case by Bull in Pursuit. But that's not going to be as well known as American Idiot. No. Preconceptions of Green Day. It's a bit of a weird one, because back when this album came out... I hated it, because mm-hmm. I hated everything to do with this sort of thing. Um, but then, like, some of the other music came out, something in a similar vein to this. I can't remember what the next album was, but I had, like, 21 Guns on and mm-hmm. Last of the American Girls, and I thought, you know what, this is actually good. If you just think of it not as, it's meant to be punk, it's meant to be this, it's meant to be that, if you just accept it as a rock record mm. and not think, oh, it's by Green Day, <laughs> then, yeah, it's a, it's just good. try to go into it unbiasedly. Yeah, so this is what I tried to do this time. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the songs, I didn't know the name of some of them, but I'd heard them all before because my sister used to love this for some reason. How about you? I think probably the first Green Day song I heard was Minority. Have you heard that one? Mm. Yeah. That, I remember just being in the school canteen and that was on Kerrang! on the TV or something. Yeah, we had a very metal, <laughs> rock and metal high school experience. Yep. Where all the rock and metal fans got beat up for like... <laughs> 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 I liked that song and then when American Idiot came out, I remember listening to it and just thinking, holy guacamole, this is the good stuff. And yeah, since then has just been like up there in my... It's very much my genre of music that I do tend to like, that Mm. I tend to gravitate more towards. I like the rocky side of things, but also I would consider this a pop punk album. Mm -hmm. I think Green Day themselves don't like to be considered pop punk. But then when I was talking to Rach before I left, she was saying, well, it's not really a punk album. No, 100% not. So wherever this does land, it it has got a poppier side to it in that there's lots of melodies like it's easier to hum along to sing along to some people have even termed this as classic rock because it's like a, a type of concept album isn't it yeah well, it's a rock opera mm. like it's a Actually concept on album. broadway yeah. isn't it yeah yeah it's Very telling us <laughs> <laughs> well exactly yeah <laughs> but like just taking the album as it is like i've not seen the actual live musical of it so i don't know exactly how the songs flow together to make a story in terms of on stage because i know the rock the rock opera version has 21 guns and stuff in it as well so it's not just american idiot but yeah preconceptions are green day were i really like them seen them live in leeds yeah. how was that it was really good rach has seen them a few times and like if they're doing something like a really well-known song like american idiot they'll get some kids up from the crowd and say like who knows how to play guitar like, you know how to play American Idiot? And they are, probably do, because there's, like, four cards in it, and they're all just power cards. So then they're like, right, you can play guitar for this one, then. And, like, 
Anyone good at drums? Like, it could go horribly wrong. <laughs> it could do, yeah. <laughs> but it really worked for when, for when I saw them at Leeds. I think they got some random kid up to play guitar for them, some random kid up to play drums. They got a bassist, and then they all played while Billy Joe sung. <laughs> I mean, imagine going back to school the next day, like, yeah, I played drums for Billy Joe Armstrong. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously bullshit. Yeah. Although so. kids these days will probably like, use that. So what did you make of this album then? Better than what I thought it was going to be. To be fair, I used to hate the song American Idiot because I hated like the full politicisation of it. It's like, yeah, we're railing against the system, but money. Give us all your money. I hated that, but if I just accept the song as what it is, then yeah, it's a good three minute whatever it is pop song. Weirdly, one of my favourite songs of all time is on this album. Ooh, let me guess. Give me an overcane? No. Holiday? Nope. Ooh. It's not going to be Jesus of Suburbia. Yeah, it is. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought, this is so far removed from what I'd expect of a Green Day song. And it's just amazing. It is a really good song. That's yeah. Rachel's favourite song on the album. Yeah. I thought you'd have... I know that you don't have the best attention span for music, so I thought it would have been too long for well, you. there we go. It actually keeps my attention span like very little else can. That That's a pretty big deal. For you yeah. to be saying that you like this nine minute song, like we shouldn't just skirt past it. We should make it clear. <laughs> if something goes on for more than three minutes, you've gone. You're, you're oh, elsewhere. I've not even been diagnosed. Yeah. So for you who doesn't tend to like punk or pop punk, have that as one of your favourite songs of all time. That's yeah, that's a mind blower. Yeah. The amount of songs on the like that one I just played then that are we waiting? Are we the waiting? Are we the waiting? <laughs> Makes sense. I know. And I don't then. understand what I don't understand what that song means. Um, I don't like that. I don't like Boulevard of Broken Dreams because oh god, I used to just be overplayed on Kerrang so much. And <laughs> Holiday, I also don't like. And Wake Me Up When September Ends because no, it's it all because of the overplayedness. Or? Well, just because they're bad songs. Right. That one's a bad song. Wake Me Up When September Ends. Why? It's just ugh, it's just bad. <laughs> Can't put my finger on why it's bad. But I also don't like the fact that. Like, do Green Day not like being called pop punk because they don't like the pop element of that? I think so. But then they go and release... Like, they kind of thought, oh, these are definitely punk. It's a... Outright ballads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the least punk things ever. Yeah, I mean, that might have changed. Like, I think that's based on an interview that I saw when I was reading Kerrang! So when I was, like, 15, half my life ago. Maybe they have embraced being pop punk or something now, I don't know. How about your favourite songs? Well, one of my favourite songs of all time is also on this album. Did you get? She's a rebel. No, I do like that song. What? Saint Jimmy. No, I do like that song. And I'm down. Can't think of any other tracks. <laughs> Give me Nova Kane. Oh, right, you just literally said that as well. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, when you said it was one of your favourites, I was like... Are we in sync here? Is <laughs> I actually can't remember what that song sounds like. It's a, more of a slower one. It starts off with just acoustic guitar. It's like, take away the sensation inside. Oh yeah, I do like that song. Yeah. Do you have anything you're there you don't like? I think probably just, like, Are We The Way In is a very interlude song. Mm. Which, given the context of Broadway, you do have interludes. And you do have songs that are kind of just there to push something. So maybe it works a lot better in the context of a live show, but for the album, it's kind of, it's just there for a bit, and then St. Jimmy comes on and it's like, okay, back to the good stuff. Mm. What did you make of Homecoming, the one near the end that's also like nine minutes long? I can't remember. <laughs> I just remember, I just remember those actually, the actual last song, What's Her Name? Yeah. That was bad. Do you like that one? No, but I can't remember what Homecoming sounds like. I was curious because that is another, like how Jesus of Suburbia is kind of like five small songs in how it's laid out. Um, Homecoming is the same, right. but well, didn't get anywhere near as big as Jesus of Suburbia. <laughs> Clearly my attention span had completely won its course <laughs> by that point because yeah. I don't remember that at all. I think that one's maybe like somewhere between seven and nine minutes long, but it's another long one made of lots of little ones. Yeah. Putting a number on it. We're doing halves, aren't we? We're doing halves, yeah. I'd say seven and a half. That's high praise. <laughs> I was saying to Rach before I left, do you reckon Savile liked American Idiot? And she was like, yeah, I don't see why not. And then I said, bear in mind, he hates punk. <laughs> like, oh, probably not then. <laughs> this isn't punk. It's not. But that's when she said, but it's not really a punk album. Yeah, doesn't he? Well, I won't say any of it's really punk. If I was to have been asked this when it came out, was it like 2001 or something it came out? 2004. 2004. So if you'd have asked me this when I was 14, 15, it would have been a 10 out of 10 album. Listening to it now, it's still very, very, very good. And 
I do very much like it. But there are a couple of songs that aren't quite as amazing as the other ones, which was why I was leaning more towards an eight now. I think it's still very good, but it's not mind blowing for me like it was as a teen. Hmm. That'll bring us to an average of 7.75. You said seven and a half, I said eight. That's pretty precise, isn't it? Which means that music this week, is it good though? Yeah. Yeah. Bye then. <laughs> Ciao. Have a nice day. Or not. Oh, yeah, you do you. <laughs>